Um, welcome back to another episode of Bok Bok. Uh, or I think in the last ad that I kept it, um, kept it a voiceover for every single time it plays, she went bok bok, and it was so um, <laughs> But welcome back to Bok Bok. Um, it is uh, we are a J Fashion um, indie brand interview kind of show where we ask different indie brands that we've worked with for small businesses, kind of about their experiences. Um, this is Zelko from Eat Me Ink Me. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Lalma. Uh, online, I'm more known as Zeloko, which is this, uh, your little name. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what I usually am known for online. That's why I usually go for that name. Uh, I uh, run a small indie brand, uh, Eat Me Ink Me, uh, which is essentially I'm a one-man team, one-man army. <laughs> 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 and well i do everything from from the ideas till shipping it out marketing everything so <laughs> this is me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we'll we'll hear a lot about more um a, a lot more about like all the different aspects of what you do um as well as we kind of go through things i feel like i also relate to you and having a weird little name <laughs> you know like it's like oh yeah this is my online name sorry guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sometimes it's weird to, uh, when you meet people in real life and you kind of just want to go for the nickname and then you're like, no, I know your real name. Should I go for that? Or is it like, yeah, not appropriate? Especially <laughs> if, if, if you meet people like first online and then like later in real life, you're like, what do I call you? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but people like a lot of times will be like, so like, how do you pronounce your username? <laughs> I get that a lot. I think yeah. mine's fairly simple, but like, uh, at least locally here, I think people are like, well, people do talk English, but at the same time, they think maybe it's some weird way how you say it. It's just yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just like a, for both of us, kind of an unusual combination of like, letters yeah yeah right <laughs> okay <laughs> um we're gonna go into just general brand introduction so um how did you discover village of fashion uh well i've been uh, the weird kid since i can remember myself really uh, so i've gone through a lot of i well, got alternative fashions but i always sort of leaned back into the gothic aesthetic and the darker types of uh, the alternative fashions and uh, around high school i think i found uh, j-rock and all that <laughs> world yeah. um, and at the time it was like 2000 i don't know six something like that and uh, it, it was very new back then so especially in Latvia here, which is like, as I, I don't know if I can curse. Oh, yeah, you're allowed to. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it was about <laughs> nowhere, really. So, and uh, we got, as I, as I, you, uh, there's this expression that I say in Latvian, uh, the most town, essentially, if I translate it. Uh, soon, <laughs> same in Latvian, but like most town, if I translate it, which is like, the deep, deep dark in the forest where uh, like <laughs> the least in last information comes to. It's like what I would say about Latvia oftentimes. And um, I, uh, I was always like looking for the weird thing for the what's this, what's that, why, why are they wearing these weird like frilly things. And um, I was very much into Malice Miser at the time, as most people, I think most, most as girls. you do. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, of course, I discovered Mana, and I, at the time, I didn't know that he was a man, and I was like mind blown when I found that out, because I've been sort of like gender queer in my expression since I knew myself. So that kind of very spoke to me, uh, the fact that he was like fully a man <laughs> wearing dresses, mm -hmm. and. Um, then I kind of, I was like, yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. It's gorgeous, especially the gothic kind, the moche stuff. I really like the aesthetics of it. It wasn't, I knew I wouldn't wear it for some reason. I was like, no, yeah, that's beautiful, but it's not for me. And um, for several years, I just, I, I knew about it, but I never really, I didn't do anything about the information, essentially. And uh, later on, 
at, I think I was already in my uh, academy when I finally discovered that I liked feminine stuff because I've always mm-hmm. been such a tomboy, like st- still, <laughs> yeah. I, I was kind of fluctuate between the two. So, and I kind of fully embraced the ultra femininity of the fashion and went full lifestyle all that, like for several years. <laughs> uh, and it was like, it was when I look at the pictures, it's kind of cringy at this point. <laughs> but like at the time, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is Lolita. This is totally like, yeah, I'm totally the Lolita, you know? And uh, so it just kind of like essentially, long story short, I discovered it as most people do through J fashion, J rock, and uh, essentially by extension, uh, J fashion. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's the long answer <laughs> of the question, I guess. Yeah. Um, and when you say academy, do you mean like um... uh, academy of arts, uh, mm-hmm. Latin academy of arts? Yeah, I went uh, for graphic design there. Mm, okay, got it. Well, it's kind um... of funny because I I went there uh, thinking I would change my course to fashion later on because at the th- at that point I already knew that I had interest in fashion in general, even if it wasn't like well, at the time, uh, but. Uh, once I started into the graphic arts, I realized it's like potions and like magic on paper. And I was like, totally like, <laughs> I went entirely into the graphics side of things because I also enjoyed the illustrations and stuff mm-hmm. and like making illustration, but there wasn't an illustration curse per se here yet at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just leaned real hard into the graphic arts and I actually don't, um, regret it at all because it's been uh, helping me in my printmaking and such as well so yeah <laughs> I mean perfect. personally personally I think going into fashion design as a um, major is terrible <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad I can imagine I've heard the stories of, oh, you of get fashion trauma. Design. oh it's my so god bad. <laughs> yeah I feel like if I had gone back in time I would have been like don't do design do <laughs> graphic design like it's I don't use my degree <laughs> I mean I don't either but... I mean you kind of do I mean you you have your own brand and you do your own like design so well it's kind of a stretch a bit to be honest <laughs> it mostly helps me with marketing because I don't have to like get anybody else to do that stuff for me oh yeah that's super helpful mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so at what point did you learn how to sew and like put together garments uh, that's, I don't think that I've known myself without knowing how to sew, to be honest, mm-hmm. because I grew up, uh, my mother used to, well, she worked several jobs at the same time. And one of them was uh, essentially, I don't know how to translate it nicely, but it's like just mass sewing, I guess, for, for mm-hmm. it, it will, well, it was the Soviet times and a lot of things were scarce at the time. So she would make like, uh, bags or like these uh, what do you call like puffy jackets for winter mm. like there's probably a term for that but I don't, can't get it at the top of my mind mm-hmm. and well I always saw her sewing although she was not the seamstress at all she also was self-taught and uh, we just had a lot of like uh, Burda magazines laying around you know the ones with the patterns and stuff mm-hmm. and I just I don't know at what point I started to like go into the patterns and and cutting things out bef- because before I've cut like made things for my like uh, stuffed animals and stuff, but it was like simple things, you know. But I couldn't pinpoint the the moment where I was like, yeah, I can sew because <laughs> it feels like I can sew since I know myself, mm-hmm. really. And it wasn't like I I want to say that I'm fully self taught, but like and i've said that before but then like years ago i realized that i did have some kind of course for a couple of months for about sewing and mm-hmm. there was like the basic sewing stuff that they taught you at school but at the same time i kind of knew everything before that so i don't know how valid that is and how valid it is for me to say that i'm fully self-taught as well yeah so. yeah if it's just like regular school they don't teach you very much because I don't know. I was talking to like my boyfriend the other day and he took uh, one of those like kind of middle school, like learn how to sew things for a couple months as well. And he didn't know what a bobbin was. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, those kind of terms are also like, at the same time, I can I couldn't tell you that I he know all the right terms. He didn't know that, that it existed. Oh, he didn't even know that. that <laughs> he was like, why, why is there a second thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Some, some actually, some... Uh, some sewing machines do have the one single thread thing, but yeah, I mean, if you don't into that, so you, it's the same with cars. I don't know shit about yeah, cars, yeah, right? I don't, so yeah, cars. I wouldn't know where to put, put anything <laughs> if I needed to, right? So it makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, speaking of that, like the term thing as well, I often struggle when I, there was a couple of times when I was trying to like get some uh, seamstresses to work with them, to try to, uh, essentially to get more stuff out and uh, because there are some things that I am willing to give for others to try and make like the simpler things mm -hmm. uh, some not so much but like I was just trying feeling out the situation here locally and I often struggled with uh, saying the right terms they would look at me and be like what is she talking about and was like what the <laughs> thing the things you have to like you know because I don't know the, the right terms and even if I did know them I mostly know them in English <laughs> which yeah. is a problem oh, here yeah. locally so because most of the seamstresses here are uh they speak most, mostly russian not everybody but like most of the better ones often are the russian ones and there was like a whole ordeal about me trying to communicate what i need to do uh, like have done and and oh <laughs> so i can did, totally relate <laughs> did you um eventually kind of like learn these terms no or are I you still, still like uh, <laughs> for some terms i'm still like what do you call that thing right mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes like i like to watch uh like tutorials sewing tutorials but like more in depth and more about like historical stuff because that's mm -hmm. what i am more interesting in interested in and uh, i oftentimes i know that the term they use that is like the historical term which yeah. is not that you use in modern times uh that's why i like to like listen to others sources <laughs> talk because that's the only way how i can learn how oh you call that that all right mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so um even though your mother kind of sewed a lot you didn't um like learn directly from her you just kind of picked up like as things were like yeah. lying around pretty much well i was i was a very uh how do you say i don't know i was kind of I, I can't say independent because kids aren't independent but i was mm -hmm. the kind of kid who would sit by themselves and find ways how to ex like enjoy themselves you know like i would do all kinds of things mm -hmm. like uh, crocheting was like a thing that i was like obsessed with through the first like years of school i was like i used to call myself like an old grandma but, like a young grandma because of that <laughs> because i kept crocheting things but i was like well i don't want the crocheted thing but i like the process of it so i would like mm. make a whole back backpack and then just t tear it all back into the thread to start all over again just because i enjoyed the process that much so uh i think it's the same kind of thing because i got really good at the crochet thing i think it's the same kind of thing with sewing that i just kept making things because i like the process of it and mm. i like i'm kind of like logically based person and i'm pretty much with uh, pretty good with uh, like math for some reason i don't know why but i was pretty good at math so patterns weren't that like difficult for me to just figure out by myself it was like oh yeah this thing probably goes here because it's like the things go together you know <laughs> i don't know it's yeah no <laughs> i think a lot of people like they're like oh yeah fashion design you don't need math for that like you know they, they're like oh like you know you can just make some no you need math that's I think that's one of the things that trips me up I was like oh no fractions <laughs> yeah it's like it's a bit like it's a tricky it's a it's a learning current for sure but once you understand the logic behind it then you're like oh oh that's why there's like a another inch there right mm -hmm. yeah I didn't know that <laughs> it goes with the process I think so yeah um so at what point did you start your brand and like did you feel comfortable um, enough to be like, oh, like I'm going to sell this. This is like an official brand. Uh, well, the time when I decided it, it's it's more. It was like a personal revelation at that point. To be honest, um, I was during the academy times. 
uh, I had the chance to uh, learn in France for a bit. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to France for about half a year. And no, don't ask me anything in French because I don't know anything <laughs> in French. <laughs> because, look, there's a horror story about that. But like, oh, no. this <laughs> I don't want to offend any French people, but I think they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but like the, the young people in France are fine. The older people are what the problem is, I think, personally. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave that to, for some other interview or time to talk about. Okay. Uh, but um, it was a time for me when I was away from everybody, including my friends, my family, everybody. Well, I would talk to them online occasionally, but for the most part, I was um, in, alone with my own thoughts. And that was actually the very first time when I was alone with my thoughts and I could actually, well, didn't like actually ask myself the question, but I came to the revolution, uh, personal revolution that, um, that I wanted to do so, like to sell things because I enjoyed it and it was like I, I, I liked to create things and I realized for the <laughs> to weed into the next question is uh, and at the point I realized that I don't don't only like to make uh, gothic or or dark classic things or classic things I also like to do sweeter things which i wouldn't wear myself so i was mm -hmm. like well i'm gonna make it i'm just gonna keep it no somebody might want it mm -hmm. so i just sort of figured like well let's try selling them and see what happens uh, i i can't say that i was like very confident about the <laughs> my sewing skills or whatever i don't think that i am still to this day just because of the lack of uh, technical training that i don't have really mm -hmm. <laughs> which is I've, fully like I just so thing I hope it fits and I just cross my fingers that everybody <laughs> likes it and nobody's gonna be like oh no she uses like zigzag instead of serger or whatever I'm like just crossing my fingers and hoping nobody's gonna like <laughs> use that against me because I do try like my best to my abilities to make them as good as I can and through learning um, to the tutorials online and everywhere everywhere else where I can like I have a bookcase here that's why I'm looking at the same everywhere else uh, where I can get the information I just um, try to like from the things that I've learned I try to improve my own techniques like if you take a dress that I've made like I don't know five years ago it's probably gonna be less quality than what I make now yeah. and even with other things not even with technical things about sewing but the materials that I choose I also try to improve on that as well as, as I learn and <laughs> realize, oh, that's probably not good. So I should probably change that or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, I think a lot of your, the like, you know, work that you do in terms of technical stuff um, and just like kind of figuring out on your own, like, I think it kind of sh like, um, like, I think your passion for that kind of shows in the garments that you construct, because I think there's a lot of different, like, unique details that are, like, really interesting and cool and, like, fun um, that, like, are kind of unique to your own designs. And I think that's really neat. Thank you. I really like that. I think the, the, the one thing that I really enjoy about sewing is the challenge. That's why sometimes, like, uh, when I have to remake the same things, I kind of get well not bored because i can find ways how to um, make the process interesting for myself anyway mm -hmm. uh but or even at, for some things like for uh, for the skirts that i make it's, it's probably bad for me to say this but like they're almost brainless for me at this point because mm -hmm. i've like i've gotten the technique down so i just can float away in my brain and just make it <laughs> and forget mm -hmm. about what I'm making. But for more elaborate pieces like dresses, it's always a bit of a fire in my ass about like, <laughs> am I going to make this one just as good as the last one or I'm going to mess something up because that that's fully a possibility. And I uh, just like for, for some, when people come to me with like commissions or some specific projects, like some of the bigger projects that I made, like the historically inspired pieces, I love the, the challenge because it's like, first of all, it's like this whole, there's like an Everest in front of me. I'm like, how am I going to even start to climb that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, then 
since I'm a very logical person, I realize that I just have to like subdivide it into smaller parts. Like I have to figure out the bodice, I have to figure out the skirt, and then I'll just figure out how to put them together. Then I try to look into some uh, historical inspirations because like for ex like historical inspired piece, uh, I would also like to not only implement, but learn new like uh, historical techniques that I might mm -hmm. choose like, and uh, some of the techniques I've actually tried to use in my regular uh, designs because I find that it's really good or very like comfortable for the person who wears them, which is also a very like strong point that I always try to bring into the designs that they don't always look just pretty, but that they are also very comfortable because mm -hmm. I know I'm a creature of comfort. <laughs> I don't like to wear things that I'm not <laughs> like comfort uh, comfortable. Like I have some brand pieces that I have them sitting in my wardrobe just because they're like, they're not fit to my body. So I'm just not going to mm -hmm. wear them unless I absolutely have to like for some brand event or whatever. Uh, so I just kind of want for the people who wear my pieces to be always like, oh, I wouldn't wear that dress because it's the most comfortable dress that I have. <laughs> yeah, you know? I think like also for me, as I've gotten older, I've just wanted like I used to be able to be uncomfortable for some time. But now I'm not <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like just with age. I'm like, I don't I don't want to be in pain anymore. <laughs> the time of pain has to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people um, need to bring more comfort in in fashion. I think it's, right, especially it's, if it's if it's like something that you wear like kind of on a daily basis, or right? Like you yeah. know, casually, you'd want it to be something that is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, in terms of what your process is like, how do you go from like idea and like you know, kind of concepts to a finished product or a collection? Uh, it, was, it was kind of funny. I think it was the last interview, interview where you uh, interviewed Nautis, where he said that he had like his full uh, item ready already in his head. I'm the kind of person who is fully the other way around. Um, <laughs> I usually get the inspiration once I see the material, mm. or if I if I find some kind of very interesting design that I want to try um, if it's like a plain solid piece um, uh, but oftentimes it's like me just going into a fabric store and be like oh oh this this could be a dress this could be a really cool dress <laughs> and now I have the lace at home that I can use for this particular fabric because oftentimes it's like uh, I don't know uh, if people noticed but the slogan for for evening me is stories to be sewn it's mm -hmm. uh, it's fully a reference to that where uh, it's literally like the fabrics are being there and they're like, Oh, come, come make me into something, you know? And mm -hmm. I see it and I'm like, Oh, I know exactly what you want to be. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird, but I, I, I fully like the process starts for me in the materials and in the fabrics or prints or if I do something uh, elaborate like the solids or the embroideries, then it's uh, in the design of the embroidery or the idea that I want the embroidery of some kind of uh, on a piece. Yeah. That's super interesting that um, you heard that and you're like, oh, I'm the opposite. Because like, you know, obviously just there's, there's so many different ways that people work. It's really interesting to hear like how everybody like you know, starts and has their process. I know with Haley, she gets vendors who have fabric, like fabric vendors that come to her house and like show her things. And then she goes and she buys them, but they don't get shipped until like months later. And then so she oh, just no. receives a box and she's like, why did I order this? Now I have to make something. <laughs> No, I mean, I, t I fully get it. If, if I was in that kind of situation, well, that would be trouble for me, to be honest. <laughs> I already have like boxes and boxes of materials that I need to work through and, and they're not even like full bat batches, like what do you call the full like uh, okay. thing of fabric? Bolt, bolt. Or oh yeah, bolt. not a bowl of holes. <laughs> yeah, not really the big. full bolt. It's like a couple of, uh, like probably a couple of meters of a specific material because I often buy off like leftovers and like, mm -hmm. you know, the discarded type of materials. I also sometimes buy the, well, not damaged, but some like with some um, misprints or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I often try to either incorporate them into the design or 
try to work around the pattern around the like misprint or whatever it is right mm -hmm. and i find that's another like challenge for me i don't know mm -hmm. why i need i want to like make everything difficult for myself but here <laughs> I, I am <laughs> i love that i think you know there's a bunch of different brands um you know that at least for um because because we because you know we've been having to work with so many different people and a lot of people have different like um definitions of how they are sustainable obviously everyone's a small business and they're doing what they can but like you know for some people it's using certain kinds of fibers and some people it's like working in different ways and i think that like using leftover fabric and like trying to use up things that already exist is also a very good way of trying to you know not be wasteful yeah this is actually for the past year or so i've been very focused on that for some reason i don't know i think it's time for me to start uh figuring out a better way either to how to how I use my materials because I don't have a lot of scraps. I don't tend to because like <laughs> another thing that I learned from my <laughs> mother is that I use every bit of this uh, of mm -hmm. the piece that I have. Like if I have half a meter, I'm going to squeeze every centimeter out of it that I can. Unless I have like small bits that I can't use at all, mm -hmm. then I'm going to try to figure out maybe I can piece them together in a way that they don't look pieced and make like, I don't know, accessories or something out of it. Because like, I've been taught not to be wasteful. And I mm -hmm. tried to, I, I'm not even conscious about it at this point. But once I started thinking about it, oh, yeah, it's kind of like trying not to be wasteful. It was just part of how I was raised in a way. Mm -hmm. And another thing I wanted to add about the um, pro uh, about the process that I have is for why I uh, said Narciss was entirely different from me is that uh, for him it was fully a design in his head that he knows is going to come out in reality. Mm -hmm. and for me, it's often like some vague idea of design <laughs> or like a shitty sketch that I've like drafted quickly. I was like, oh yeah, this thing, so I don't forget this. This is the point why I'm making this dress, so to speak, mm -hmm. because I tend to forget things. I'm really get forgetful in a way. <laughs> and, and and sometimes it's you start making the dress and you're like, oh, I'm going that way. And then suddenly you're going this way because just the fabric spoke differently to me or whatever, or mm -hmm. I figured, oh, this is going to be a better neckline for that because like that's more interesting or whatever. So it's, it's uh, oftentimes even hard for me to take some... Um, like when people come to me with the commissions and they're like, oh yeah, I want something like this. I'm like, okay, I can make something like that. Do you want an actual sketch or you just want something like <laughs> that? Leave it up to me. Because sometimes I, I realize why people wouldn't like trust me because maybe like I'm picky, I know, fully. So uh, I know why other people might as well be picky, right? So um, it's, it's hard for me to make a sketch and stick to it <laughs> because mm -hmm. I, I figure something out or I don't know, something I cut into the material a bit more so i have to change the design like i try to adapt the design as i go and if something is not going right then i'm just gonna find a way how to make it right some <laughs> other way right so yeah, yeah that's another thing that i wanted to add yeah i think being like you know being flexible is also like also a pretty good trait to have right so that you're not so you're you know, focused on more like just having this creative process of like getting something done Um, so your your items feature a lot of hand embellished details like embroidering or reading. Did, how, how did you learn these techniques? Well, it's much the same as with sewing. <laughs> I, I just I see a thing and I want to learn the thing, so I'm just gonna take a needle and try to figure it out myself, mm -hmm. really. And of course, I've, I've I try to do some little bit of research, like so I don't go in there entirely blind. But some things are quite like for example for me i think embroidery unless it's some kind of like gold thread embroidery that's like with the with the small tubes things i don't even have to call them <laughs> like there's there's all kinds of embroidery but if i'm talking about simple thread needle embroidery i think it's very uh, how do you say it intuitive Mm -hmm. You start making it, and then of course you're gonna. The first one's gonna turn out shit because it's the learning process. And uh, then you make it, and then you learn how, how how big the tension needs to be, or how little, what kind of threads to use or not use, and 
like I discovered that if you press your embroidery, it looks like a hundred times better. So <laughs> I've started pressing my embroideries. Not that I do a lot of them, but like the, 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 the few that I do, I press them and then they suddenly look a hundred times better. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I just know it looks better. So if it works, it, it works. Right? <laughs> it's it's it, like my my slogan for life. I think is if it's it, if it works, it's not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I think also another thing that's like kind of I've noticed that's unique to your brand is all of these like hand embellished details, um, which. It's not like you don't see that in Lolita, but obviously with the um, with like the major brands, they're not going to be like, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I often, I think I often um, do very simple designs, so I'm always scared that they might be too simple. Like we're not talking. I'm not Moitia, right? I'm not gonna. <laughs> but like I always, um, I fear that it's not detailed enough to be a Lolita dress, so to speak, right? And uh, I think that's why I often figure like, okay, I have like a couple of hours for this dress still, so I might just go for it and like embroider the whole hem of with pearls. Why not? You know, <laughs> because I know it's gonna it's gonna be first of all okay, stupid, but like it's a selling point. Two, <laughs> it's gonna push myself because I don't like doing things and make myself do things, so I get better at doing things. <laughs> And uh, three, it's like, I think it looks pretty. And like, I don't know, pearls on the hem, that's something like unusual. Like, I don't know yeah, why. That's unique. Pearls <laughs> on the hem thing, but like, let's say that's that's the thing that I'm going for, right? Um, and like, I don't see, there's more pros than cons, so I just kind of go with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think like, you know, having these like more unique details is also like you said a pretty good selling point and i think it's really fun and interesting to see all the different um like ways you can make a little garment that isn't your typical like you know oh we'll add a ruffle here right (laughs) yeah yeah right yeah i think uh, on one point i always try to be conscious of uh, of the fact that somebody might want to ask to make another one and how willing I would be to make another <laughs> the same thing, right? Which is not a lot, to be honest. Yeah, like, well, they can pay you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's what I usually do. I just feel like if I don't really don't want to make the thing, I'm just probably going to raise the price and be like, okay, I'm going to make it for that price. If not, then, well, you know, there's a lot of indie brands out there. <laughs> it sounds terrible, but like uh, I try to like keep it interesting for myself, and I, mm. I don't want to. If I if I start making thing that I really don't want to make, I know it's not gonna turn out great, and like the energy that I put into the piece that I'm making is also not gonna be great, and I don't want other people to carry around my negative energy. You know, mm-hmm. it's not fair to them as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, having one offs isn't necessarily a bad thing. It also is like, oh, like this piece is unique and only one person can have it. Like, and I think that's like, you know, not a bad thing. Yeah. If I could, I think I would fully go into like <laughs> one off pieces because then I could keep it interesting. Like, I could make like several versions of a piece. Like, I often, like, I don't know if people noticed it, but they always think, oh, they're going to notice. <laughs> it's when, like, I make some kind of release, then after a time, if I have some kind of uh, material left over from the release, I'm going to make another rendition in a different design, which is just mm-hmm. fully because, like, oh, what else can I do with this print? You know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to push myself. Um, but at the same time, I know people. Like, for example, this, like, okay, this is the actual problem is, uh, like, currently everybody uh, that contacts me mostly wants the orchard print, which is, like, the, I think the last print that I did, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> if yeah. there wasn't other was prints between like 2019, that. maybe? Yes, right yeah. before the coronavirus. <laughs> I did that was the last one we had at anime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, true. Um, and... Uh, I know that a lot of people want uh, want me to make more of the dresses, and I also want to like find ways how I can make that print interesting for me. So I've made like I don't know at this point I think I've made like four or five other renditions in the design outside of uh, skirts that just just case, and like well dresses not just case because there's like op as well, uh, and. 
at one point, I know the people want the original design, which I, I understand why, it, right? But at the same time, I want to push myself and find other ways how I can uh, use the print and make it interesting and maybe make it simpler. Maybe the first one was too much. I don't know. You know, just experiment, see where it goes. And yeah. so, yeah. I mean, also another thing is like, regardless, I think like, you know, each design like somebody different might like it right so yeah you know, there, there's probably a customer for each different one like even if they don't like necessarily one as much you can get the other one yeah that's the that's the beauty i think of uh, indie brands that uh, very few actually stick to their like very specific style they try to like try other things outside of their like base style like and it's also interesting that uh, I think people think that I'm a classical brand. I always thought of myself as a gothic classic brand, but apparently I'm not pushing the <laughs> gothic thing too much. I mean, your your so, brand, your logo is covered in bats. Well, right? yeah, like, right? <laughs> and I have a pumpkin in my like this uh, yeah. emblem thing. So I was always like, oh, it's a gothic brand. Where are you getting them? The classic. Well, I am kind of classic, but like. It's a mix of the both because mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> pretty gothic things you know romantic goth i guess <laughs> yeah it's probably because of like you know if if people see just your painting dresses and they're like oh yeah it's painting oh. classic <laughs> right yeah, right yeah i get it yeah <laughs> but oh speaking of painting prints um our next question is um you know you have a lot of prints that feature classical art um how do you choose the paintings that you do and are there any that you've choose, chosen that are meaningful for you personally or do you have any favorite artists that you've used uh i don't i don't have well any of the ones that i've presented i don't think any of them, well the i always liked classical art so it's hard for me to say no i don't like it <laughs> you know because <laughs> i do like it it's but it's not like my favorite favorite I would choose probably different uh, different prints if it was for me myself personally. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to be conscious of what people uh, like because mm -hmm. I have to sell it to the people who want, want them, right? Yes. And um, I think at the very first release of the Old Masters series, I did a poll because I had so many paintings. I had, I think, after the fir first poll, I had thirteen paintings. Mm -hmm. which is a lot to keep up with um even if i do like print on demand the material that i need it's still i i don't want to make people wait for the things so i try to keep like the more popular prints in house so mm -hmm. i have them ready to go when i need to and oftentimes if you have 13 prints in several lengths it's not really <laughs> yeah. like materially viable for me to do that mm -hmm. especially if there are some prints who are like not selling that well so in the second edition i just uh, i chose i think i left a couple from the first one that were really popular the botticelli one for sure i forget maybe the grimshaw was the other one i really forget because the first edition <laughs> was years ago <laughs> Uh, but uh, then I added a couple more, like the Fragonard ones, which Fragonard seemed to be a pretty popular artist between the Lolita community, like, and the Boucher as well. Uh, like, he has very classy, light, like, playful paintings. And I, re I understand why people like them, but, like, mm -hmm. personally, it's not for me because I'm more dark, broody, and, like, ooh, <laughs> border, right? Uh, but I, I appreciate and I like uh, the lighter art as well. And apparently a lot of people like the uh, lighter pieces. So uh, I just try to go with what people might, I think might be, might like and mm -hmm. adjust if I feel it's not going well, uh, like offer people to choose from things that they might want to. And I actually recently figured that I might need to do like a third rendition or something for the, for the prints because it's been years since I've changed them. And I know some people are, have been asking for other kinds of prints. So I might just figure something out, maybe do a small poll or be open to suggestions for people what kind of prints they might want, mm -hmm. uh, painting wise, I mean. So I might do <laughs> another like third round of, yeah. of <laughs> type of uh, prints for that too. 
but yeah, t I thought of that. Like, I don't really have uh, s favorites uh, for myself personally within mm -hmm. the uh, offered prints. I do like like the darker ones, of course, the Botticelli yeah. and the Grimshaw, clear, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, I would probably print print uh, a different one for myself. But I would have to ch really see and check which which kind. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so besides art, where else, like, what else do you kind of draw inspiration from for designing garments? Uh, well, the materials, of course, mm -hmm. which is like uh, one of the things that I already talked about. Um, then, yeah, the challenges about what can I do or how can I do it? I think the uh, if there's no material or no like commission or anything, then I generally like to draw inspiration from trying to smush together contrasts, like mm -hmm. uh, the same practical practicality versus uh, the design, right? I want it to be pretty frilly, like over the top, but at the same time, I want it to be very variable and very simple to like upkeep and not be like, how do I even wash this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so try to try to find ways how to like mash that kind of concepts together or like, I don't know, old and new. Like, I like the concept of a really modern Lolita um, mm -hmm. piece. But at the same time, I'm very drawn to the historical stuff. So I oftentimes try to like mash things together. It's probably not that visible outside of my process, but I don't know, like let's say techwear and like Victorian fashion and try yeah, to yeah. Put those together <laughs> and see what happens, what comes out. Like maybe I take the functionality from the techwear and I take the aesthetics from the Victorian fashion and just kind of figure something out how to put mm -hmm. it together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's the contrast mostly and all kinds of contrast it inspires mm -hmm. me. Yeah, that's super fun. I guess I wouldn't have thought about that, but I mean, it does also seem like it because like it seems like you like challenges and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of makes sense. You're like, oh, I want to like, you know, try and work something out, right? Like find a solution for how to solve this problem. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, there's no problem. Let me find the problem. Let me make a problem <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Why would I not? <laughs> oh no, the consequences of my own actions. Yeah, right? <laughs> Um, so is there, an, are there any ideas that you've kind of like had on the back burner because of any, like, you know, any reason, um, that you've been trying to produce and are there any reasons for why you haven't done certain things? Oh, so many. <laughs> I have like folders and folders of, of print ideas and design ideas and like, way. oh, yeah. Oh, just imagining the sheer amount of things that I've saved and like accumulated over the years just in digital form to like try and sometime pull inspiration or ideas from it's so much uh, if I if I try to like pick from the things that I've more crystallized out because some mm -hmm. most of the folders and files and things they're like seeds for me like here's a little sprinkle of this or a little sprinkle of that and just kind of figure something out to go through them and find inspiration in them somehow and I don't know we've been you know it's like at, at some point I find that those folders are like uh, that thing with macaroni that you stick to the wall and see what oh, sticks yeah. to it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. You're not sure what sticks but something sticks and you just come out of it and you're like oh yeah I can like try and do that. But uh, from the more crystallized out ideas, um, there's been one that I've been thinking, oh my God, has it been like five, six years <laughs> uh, <laughs> since, since the seed of the idea until mm -hmm. it's like grown into what I would like. Uh, there's this one idea about a forest print. And I have a very specific illustrator in my mind that I want to collaborate with. I haven't mm -hmm. even talked to them yet, but like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I have this idea in my head that with what I would like for it to look like, and it would be very dark, gloomy, like foresty and like frilly. 
it's it's hard to explain <laughs> because it's more of a mood in my head mm -hmm. and, and i every time i be uh, i am on the way of maybe contacting the illustrator i'm like wait but i don't really actually have a like a grasp of the concept of what i want how am i gonna explain it to them right so i don't want to be like yeah i want this thing in the forest thing that you kind of do but like you know do it for me <laughs> it sounds very vague and very weird and i'm like oh my god that's so unprofessional for me i mean i don't know if someone came to you and they're like oh i have a vague idea can you do something with it it, it feels like you'd be able to work with that because you like that process anyway so maybe it's the same for other people i guess i would need to like i don't know I, I don't know the person, so I don't want to, like, be rude to them just by yeah. saying something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I've always assumed that artists, um, like, when you, I don't know, I've, like, for example, if I ask for, like, a tattoo kind of art, I usually go to them, I'm like, hey, like, I, ha like, you can, I, this is the idea, but I also want you to do it in your own style and do whatever you want, so cool, there you go. <laughs> I feel like yeah. it's a little bit easier for them than rather trying to stick to one thing that someone like they're like I want this thing and it has to be like this and this is like you know it ha like otherwise it's not going to fulfill all of my dreams right it's difficult to work with that <laughs> how dare you that's me <laughs> <laughs> that's fully me that's like, it's terrible being picky but also being like I'm super vague about what I want but I want this very specific thing that I only <laughs> a vague like grasp on myself <laughs> that's terrible oh my gosh <laughs> but yeah um outside of that uh, i can uh, probably say that i also would like to do more co collabs because i realize i'm not terribly good at making prints or the ones that i want to make are usually like why would i make the simple thing when i can make something very <laughs> Hard on myself. Why would you do that? Why would I do that? Right. Like for like the last print that I really put a lot of effort in was the Alberta one. Well, the Albert Street in Alberta. That's essentially the same, but I did like two different renditions of it. But like I drew like the whole facades by hand, and that was a process. And then trying to figure how to put it all together. Oh, that was. <laughs> too much effort for <laughs> for what I could pull and I didn't realize it at, at start but like I'm glad I went through that process because I learned so many things about it um, since then I've been kind of scared to try and draw things for myself again because mm -hmm. I'm not entirely convinced that I first of all I can draw anymore <laughs> because I haven't in so many years and two that the things that I draw would be interesting for other people like I don't have some like specific style or concepts that I'm drawn to, so it's hard mm -hmm. for me to just sit down and be like, yeah, I'm gonna draw like I don't know illustration for Poe or whatever. You know, it, th it doesn't come to me that easily. So mm -hmm. I would like to do for the prints. I would like to do more collabs and uh, like the the one that I did with uh, my inspiration. It was a really cool one. Uh, I didn't actually think that she would say yes <laughs> because I was like, who am I to like ask her this like ginormous task for me to be like, yeah, I want the collab, let's go. <laughs> but she said yes, so it's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm actually hoping to do another rendition of that print as well, probably in some other color to make it more spicy, interesting and uh, have another collab in the works in the very early stages so i'm not gonna say a lot i'm just gonna say it involves <laughs> something spooky and something <gasps> bugs <laughs> ah! <laughs> i'm kind of i'm kind of excited because the the illustrators that i'm working with are very talented so i have full trust in what they mm. will come up with so Hopefully that will come soon, but not too soon. Not not this year or next year soon, probably. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a long process. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think also like I don't know, from like a consumer point of view, it's really interesting to be able to see collaborations and get something that's like oh, like multiple people have worked on this, and it's like it's it's a cool like you know combination of things, and I don't know. 
I think I think collabs are cool from like a consumer point of view. I'm like, oh, it's special. <laughs> yeah, especially if it like overlaps your interests, like uh, the high nulli and most badger one. That's very mm -hmm. like I think that's like the jackpot of all collaborations. Oh, yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of like how fast they sold that Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can insane. imagine. Yeah, yeah, that was a very great one to see. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing that really got me about that release was um, the uh, the video that uh, I think Hinelli took, where it's like a giant bottle of like soda or something, and she like puts it in one of the pockets. It like fits like this much. <laughs> wow, like, oh, it's got pockets. Right, it's right. So I mean. <laughs> I watched, uh, I think it was Fluffy Tari's video of uh, the Royal Vegas retreat where uh, there were these models walking the uh, stage and every time the model put her fa uh, her hands into the pockets, everybody's like, ah, <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> putting pockets in every dress now. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I was at the event, but I didn't get to go to the fashion show because I was in the vending hall, um, oh. like do, like doing vending. So, but it was it's right across, um, kind of like the hallway. So I just heard yelling like <laughs> at different times. It was just like ah, and then I was like, what is going on in there? I guess it must have been pockets. <laughs> But it's interesting because I, I don't think I've, like, for other fashion shows that I've seen, well, for American fashion shows, I've only seen, like, videos, of course, and haven't seen them live. But, like, compared to what I've seen in uh, Europe, it's always, like, the Americans are super, like, excited about what they see on the, <laughs> on the stage. And I love that because it, it like, endears the models to be, like, more open and mm -hmm. happy on the stage. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also good to have, like, kind of just, you know, the like really obvious feedback from the audience. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. like they like the thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so you vended through Haley at both Fanime and Pop-Up Shop for like a good number of years now. Um, have you ever traveled to the US for an event? And is that something you'd want to do? I ha haven't traveled for an event. I have traveled once to America was years ago <laughs> uh, but that was unrelated to uh, any of the comms because i was it was very start of uh, when i started sewing in general for lolita so i was nowhere in the vicinity of uh, any kind of events or anything <laughs> but i would definitely love to like come and see for any kind of events i've been uh, actually right before <laughs> corona i was like i think it's time i finally get my, my shit together and just go there and just you know stay there for like a week for some kind of event or something but like <laughs> corona hit of course yeah, and I, everything went to shit i think again. everyone right before corona was like i want to travel and then corona was like no no you don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so you... <laughs> oh in yeah. terms of like in-person events do you have anywhere you live that you attend uh at the very start of when I started wearing the fashion, I tried to gather up a community because there's, to say there is very little pe people here to wear the Leah is an understatement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because from, from the people that I know in Latvia, it's less than 10. Mm -hmm. There's probably more, but for the ones that I know, and for, for a couple of years, I was like the head, well, ahead <laughs> i was just organizing a lot of events and mm -hmm. i was trying to make a facebook group with all the i think the facebook group is still active though uh like try to gather as much people as i can who are interested in it who might want to get into the fashion mm -hmm. in the first years i also tried to uh, uh, organize a lot of like meetups and all that but it's always sort of like you know, well, people come when they don't know any idea what Oli is, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and it's like that kind of vibe. So, uh, of course, there's some people who knew and who are like in it from the very start. But things kind of fizzled out and I lost any kind of confidence in organizing things. So I just, it was, it takes a lot of um, 
energy and it takes a lot of like enthusiasm to mm -hmm. be like hey let's go do this thing it's gonna be really cool we're gonna go to the museum we're gonna go yeah. to the <laughs> we're gonna hang out and be cool and everybody's like awkward nobody knows everybody really and so they're kind of sitting there and like where's this gonna end and <laughs> I, I, i'm an introvert so i don't really have that kind of energy to spare a lot mm, yeah times. So it was a lot of me hyping myself up, going through the thing, and then being like, "Why am I even doing this?" <laughs> so it's it was the roller coaster I was going through all the time, and then at one point I just sort of gave up. And but the, by that time uh, I had already uh, I don't know actually how, but we sort of I started uh, communicating with the Estonian com, which is like neighboring country. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot more people there and they're way more active than than we are here and i kind of sort of got sort of adopted there i guess <laughs> i could say because for any of the meetups that i've gone were usually to estonia for their events so just kind of oh you want to have an event okay sure i'll pop in a bus and be there in a couple of hours you know <laughs> well not a couple hours but like it's it's probably ridiculous for you because so like how far places are in America is like nothing compared to like I could cross my whole country in three hours really. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's probably different for you, but like for for us, like a four hour ride to Estonia was kind of like, uh, well, I'm, okay, for the event I'll do it, sort mm -hmm. of thing. So um, generally, I just uh, I go there for the events, any mm -hmm. kind of meetups that I might my do and oftentimes i meet a lot of the girls outside of the valdir events like if we have some kind of like anime gamer related <laughs> conventions here then uh, i would usually meet at least one of the girls and and if i go to helsinki which very travel every year essentially at this point well not the past two years but <laughs> you uh <-huh>. know <laughs> every year they're organizing <laughs> something i always try to go there and um support them and, and uh, participate and uh, I would always uh, meet a lot of the Estonian girls too, there too so mm -hmm. what was the full question I already I think I oh it was like a lot of there was a lot of questions in that one question <laughs> yeah. it was like have you traveled for events have you like you know do you want to sell for traveling events are there events where you live like what's the deal with events kind of. yeah well essentially I think <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, yeah, you're you're right that in terms of like traveling over country borders for me is like that's really intense. But at the same time, like being willing to travel for like three or four hours to go to an event is also like oh, like it would have to be a, it would have to be like a special thing for me when I travel that far. To be honest, <laughs> so, you know, I take for granted that things are close by. Yeah, well, it's it's a bit different because we don't really have that many meetups here. So if we do, then it's probably a couple of year, and that's in a year without a corona, right? <laughs> so yeah, so it's not that terrible. Mm -hmm. Have there been any meetups like in the last two years? Because you know people haven't been like you know they they not. <laughs> Uh, I think the Estonian con has had a couple of events, but due to travel, I didn't really go. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the last the last one that I went was uh, the HelloCon one. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Regine, yeah, Regine, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I don't know Latin. <laughs> no, it was something like that. <laughs> and uh, well, that's one of the Hello Con events. So um, I was sure I needed to go there because it was a Hello Con event. And I'm like, I need to check that box. <laughs> I, <need> to... <laughs> I can't miss an event. At this it, point. it looks really cool as an event. It'd be like really neat to see that. Yeah, it was. It was great. Aside from the fact that we needed to wear the masks inside all day mm -hmm. which is like smothering like i don't have a problem with masks in general but if you have to like carry boxes and like oh yeah platform high heels up <laughs> like medieval stone steps and like oh that was a bit intense but like yeah. i live through it it's fine i'm here still so. mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so we're kind of coming towards the end of the questions. Um, so we're going to ask you about your struggles. 
<laughs> um, so, you know, are there any struggles that you have as an indie designer or a small business owner? Well, there's a lot of like small things that add up, but well, I think it's the mo the mo bigger biggest problem is usually time, and I'm a one one person army <laughs> thing, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty terrible at asking for help, so that doesn't help the situation at all. <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, I think it's mostly that like I have a full time job as well, so. I need to squeeze time in between uh, my job, actual job, uh, where I can sew. And at the same time, I need to not make my clients wait for too long, which I've been pretty terrible recently. Normally, I, I try to churn things out as fast as possible. And recently, I've realized that I've been like full, the the deadlines are going grow, growing longer and wrong, longer which is not mm -hmm. great but like it is what it is and uh, this past year i think i realized that i haven't been taking my uh, mental health in check at all mm -hmm. like <clears throat> i think i took my first actual vacation this year like and i've been doing this for 10 years mm -hmm. and throughout my all any other jobs that i've been taking vacations has been to take vacations for me to sew so it's not really a vacation no. <laughs> yeah. I take vacation so I can work sort of vacation <laughs> and uh, I was always like oh yeah I'm strong I can do whatever right I can push through all the adversity so to speak but like recently I've been maybe I'm just growing old I don't know <laughs> but recently I've been uh, feeling the burnout come out real strong mm -hmm. and I'm trying to find learn really at this point learn how to take time off because i don't know how to take time off mm -hmm. even if i do take time off it's like oh, i should be working there man mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i'm just losing time here <laughs> so yeah. it's it's hard it's like finding the mental balance for me the job and sewing things and designing and client work and all that and like try to find the best balance for that i think that that's the biggest struggle right now mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know obviously the last couple of years have been difficult difficult and difficult for everybody um but also i think because of that a lot of people have come to this realization that you know they need to treat themselves kindly right and like give ourselves allowances for you know being tired <laughs> yeah it's it's hard i've been uh, like raised up in a world where if you have time you work sort mm -hmm. of sort of situation so it's 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 hard to unlearn that really mm -hmm. and especially if like I see other people like working hard and I'm like, why am I doing, why am I not working hard? Right. When I could be, and at the same time, like literally burning out. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's hard to like, yeah. Mental health. It's a whole, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> um, if you had one thing that you could tell someone, um, if they were interested in becoming an indie brand designer, um, what advice would you give them? Oh, get that balance before. Uh, <laughs> make sure you have the time. And even if you think you have the time, double the time that you think. Because especially at the start when you're trying to figure out things, um, like just making, uh, making th designing things, making things, uh, marketing things, and anything you might want to do outside of that, it takes a lot of, a lot of time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of mental energy as well. And also, I don't know, make sure that you have some kind of plan for yourself and reason why you're doing it. Because for me, I've, uh, I can't tell you how many times, but the, I've been several times where I've been at the point where I was like, that's it. This is it. This, I'm not sewing anymore. Look, I'm closing the brand. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you know, sort of not because I don't want to sew and not because I don't have the ideas, but because it feels like, 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 why am I even doing this? Right. Mm -hmm. that's why I, I think that's why i keep pushing the challenge thing because it's a thing that challenges me that's why i kind of stuck through with it so to speak um because yeah i don't know 
it's been times when I was very close to uh, ending it all for various reasons. Um, for others, I would say, make sure you know why you're doing it. Like, have a have a reason why you're doing it, not because you have to have money or you whatever. Just personally, why you have a reason to do it, and get balance out the time, the energy you might want to put in. Figure out if you might want collaborators or people you work with, because uh, oftentimes it's it's hard to do. It. It's hard to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, just playing it playing by yeah. and uh, it, it's easier if you there's more people at least to help you from the outside of the making thing like marketing or like just people shipping things it's already mm -hmm. helpful okay at first you're gonna have one order a day it's fine you're gonna have one order a month i, I at the very first year i didn't even get any orders so mm -hmm. <laughs> it might be a full year of not doing anything but uh once it starts to happen and once it starts to roll, you need to have a set plan on how you're gonna uh, how you're gonna deal with the situation. Like mm -hmm. I think there's been few times when I've run into a problem like I'm you know over my head, mm -hmm. like uh, some 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 collections have been like busts and some collections have been so successful that I'm barely keeping up. Mm -hmm. So now I know I need to put a cap on at least on how many pieces I'm able to make in this specific release. Like I understand for other people, it might be hard to understand, but like, <laughs> like the meme with Hallie and the lady with the <laughs> make more dresses. Oh my God. <laughs> It was like with that, right? Sim simply make more dresses. Why are you releasing your items in this toxic manner? <laughs> yeah, it's very that, right? Oh and uh, you try to like put the cap. I understand her situation fully yeah. because I haven't had like terrible clients. Thank God. I've mm -hmm. been very lucky and very yeah. fortunate. With this the, is like her oh first my... one in like the whole time that she's oh done this. It's like someone's actually been this terrible. <laughs> It's, it's like the lady re re read the room it's not here <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah it was terrible like I, I tried to like anticipate what kind of problems i might have like that kind of problem and mm, either if i think that the client side might not understand why i'm doing this i try to explain it and well, I try to. I don't know if I'm good at it or if it, I'm successful at it or just people like, oh, yeah, she's just releasing this, this, that 10 dresses, I guess. Okay, fine, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if they ca catch up to that or at all. Not that they need to. They just need to enjoy whatever I'm putting out. But, like, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's, it's important for me to be, um, for the clients to be informed about these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can actually add like I'm not that I'm I'm not plugging in anything because there's nothing to plug, but uh, <laughs> I think it was about half a year ago when I was watching some kind of review of a dress and I got so frustrated that I wanted to be like no that's it I'm making I'm making a video on construction about dresses and why people use what they use what kind of techniques they use and yeah. finishing in the dresses so you understand it as a like person who doesn't like sell right yeah yeah there's <laughs> a lot understand? of i think that when you're not someone who runs a brand and you don't understand like how things are made or you know how much time something takes or the resources that takes it's easy to be like oh like you know why don't you make more dresses or, yeah. you know, um, or, you know, like, why can't you make like all like, you know, five different sizes, right? It's just, you know, the lack of kind of understanding of how the business works. Yeah. I think I've, I've been wanting to do that and I've been making a list of things that I might want to talk about. So if anybody wants to, if anybody has questions or or reason needs reasons for things so be sure to like drop me a line anywhere or drop uh, a line to mm -hmm. area by K, like, so they can uh, 
tell me about like why I don't know why is like this seem like this I don't know it's weird it's a choice I'm like it's not a choice <laughs> it's a technical thing that's why it is there. it just I don't know it I got so frustrated of being salty about it so since <laughs> that <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of I remember um when Arya from um the Dahlia and Haley did that panel together about like how sizing in small business works. That was so great. I yeah. feel like a lot of people don't understand like <laughs> like and hopefully now, you know, if there's more information out there, it'll be a little bit easier to understand. Yeah. But, fully and i i actually learned a lot of things there myself because i'm not in like i'm not well versed in the technical side of things mm -hmm. so i didn't mm -hmm. even know how the like most of the things that they talked about the work I, because i'm just one person i mm -hmm. do it like case by case basis it, i don't even have like selection of sizes that i just go there and pick whatever i need and like here's your size it doesn't work that way mm -hmm. for me so it was interesting for me to hear that about the uh what do you call it not the... <laughs> when you get research about sizing and stuff mm -hmm. like that's a great idea because like sometimes i i want to make a dress i'm gonna make a one-off and i'm like well which is the pop most popular size i don't even know like which should I make should I make it bigger should I make it smaller because there's a very few big size dresses so I kind of want to con like <laughs> make bigger sizes just because there's there would be more options for bigger sizing right mm -hmm. but at the same time my mo most popular client has the regular size so which one do I make <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah. so it's it's interesting like these kind of things I, th I think there should be more uh, talks about and that was a really great panel i love that yeah and i i would like to think that as a whole um like lolitas are a little bit more understanding of like small businesses and the like you know the wait times and the ways that they operate just because i think we're already used to waiting a long time for things <laughs> like oh if you do like an end like for the mto you're gonna wait like a year right oh, like so who cares <laughs> but also like you know as a whole, I've seen a lot of people be really supportive of, you know, small businesses and, um, you know, just like the general things that they go through. Hopefully, I think more than the average, like, consumer. Yeah, that, I totally agree. Um, so do you have any plans for the future in terms of, I guess, your brand, but I don't know, maybe, maybe yourself, maybe a vacation? <laughs> maybe a vacation? <laughs> um yeah well uh i think the oh i'm not aspiring to become a youtuber or anything but like i think i might try and dip my toes into making some like informational videos like that mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. know if they there will be any interest in that and to be honest i don't really care i just need to get down my system <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just like i'm salty i need to talk about this yeah <laughs> so i might like do that but like there's no promises about that i'm just i'm just chewing on the idea of, of mm -hmm. that to happen since uh, that involves so like filming in general involves so much and i realize that and i'm not sure that people might be willing to watch uh webcam quality <laughs> videos <laughs> Not like in 2005. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. Outside of that, I'm just trying to figure out the best way how... Well, the balance that I was talking about. I'm just trying to figure out the balance. And it's been like years of process already. And I think I'm just so grateful that my clients are still like talking and like talking to me and like uh, buying my things and... and, and uh, supporting me in general because uh i've been so i i don't i try not to be flaky and i generally go by the rule not to be flaky mm -hmm. because i know how that looks from outside and mm -hmm. like i have had the whole reputation of the brand laying on the fact that i can't be flaky yeah. <laughs> so so uh, whenever i make premises i make sure that uh, i can fulfill them and uh, so for every every new um collection there's some like minor changes that i do to adapt and i just hope that 
within the next year, hopefully within the next year, I can finally figure out the best uh, way how to go go about to doing releases and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there should be like a like a learning course about that because <laughs> the struggle is so real. Mm -hmm. oh my God. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is all of the questions that I have prepared. Um, is there, do you have any like closing comments that you would want to make? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I think, uh, I can add only, oh, it's like totally out of the blue, but I can totally add that feedback is very int uh, necessary and important for both brands and both event creators. Uh, so if you are participating in an event or if you are purchasing from the brands, be sure to, of course, respectfully, mm. <laughs> don't try to like be like, oh, this shit does not fly <laughs> with me or whatever. Uh, but like, you know, be respectful about it, but like give feedback to brands. Like even if you don't like things, you don't have to like, <laughs> go about doing great statements you can just like personally um, contact the brands or event organizers or people you know organize things and give them uh constructive criticisms like let's say yeah this this dress is great and everything but like i don't feel about the lining it feels really off or whatever <laughs> you know mm -hmm. i've just seen a lot of um uh well, it mostly pops up uh, in the reviews of things, and that it's. I'm not talking about my things. Mm -hmm. Um, for other things that I've noticed over the years is that people like to passive aggressively say, "Oh yeah, their quality have changed. I'm not really purchasing any from them anymore. I'm like boycotting them because they did this one thing wrong." And I'm mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, it's like a new brand. Of course, they're gonna make mistakes. It's normal. Like you can just contact the brand and see how they react." Oh, course if they react inadequately it's fine you can hate on them but um i think you've benefited the uh, of the doubt for, mm -hmm. uh, for people because there's actual people behind the brands and the events and and organizing so yeah yeah and like if you are a brand or if you do organize events like you should be able to take a little bit of criticism otherwise you probably shouldn't be doing that <laughs> yeah. like you need to be able to deal with some because you're kind of in like the public eye, so. Yeah, it comes with the territory. It's yeah. like, you can't even like escape that if you want to. So yeah. Yeah, nothing too exciting from me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think we have some exciting stuff because you're, you have some new items that are coming to the pop-up shop next week. Yeah, there's like, quite a bit. <laughs> Yeah, there it's two boxes with two giant some... boxes. Yeah, <laughs> which are I didn't making... even have a, a box big enough to, uh, to send yeah. everything, so I have to send it to two yeah. boxes. They're, they're getting shipped to my work because oh. Haley wasn't sure if she was going to be home. <laughs> oh yeah, she said that she was going to be away from Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. 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 So well, hopefully I'll... you don't have to carry it yourself because it's pretty heavy. Box. Probably not. I mean, I'll, there'll probably be someone to like give them to me. But then I'll have to figure out how to get them to my car. But they'll probably be like, why are you receiving these giant boxes? <laughs> you said you went on the shopping spree, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. They have my box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to see the new stuff and also for, you know, everyone to see the things at the event. Yeah. People like them. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll drop some of your links in the chat. Here is your shop, which is that, and social media. Ooh, so great to see that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot coming. It's on its way. It's a mystery, but yeah. it's on its way. It's a mystery to me, not you, obviously. I think it's the the best thing for for people is that they can get to touch the things because mm -hmm. buying online is not the same as you can touch things and like try them on or whatever. It's a hit different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm excited for you to visit. 
Yeah. And so this is oh, they've seen your stuff at um, the collective. Yeah. So great to hear that. Yeah, just shout out to the Lolita Collective. They do an amazing job of like they are damn me beat. My God. Um yeah, they uh when the collective first got started, I got to see your skirts in person. So yeah, they they do a really cool job of being, you know, showing people different indie brands and like letting people see them at different places and different cons and stuff. It's really neat. Um, so yeah, I don't remember what I clicked on this. This is um, your social media. If anyone wants to follow you or I guess reach out to you individually um, with opinions or anything like that. Yeah. Send me your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My spicy opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get people sliding in with opinions about like, I don't know, pineapple and pizza or something. <laughs> oh, I have a spicy opinion for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you for listening. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for, oh, I don't know, are, are do you guys have different pizza toppings? Uh, I'm not sure. We have all <laughs> kind of weird things here, but I think we mostly get the regular Italian types. <laughs> yeah. We also get pineapple on pizza. Yeah, that's also a thing we do. <laughs> That's actually my mother's favorite type of pizza, too. <laughs> Ooh. It's, it's, yeah, it's a controversial choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least we don't have sushi pizza, which whatever that I, is. Is that a thing? <laughs> I, I've watched a couple of uh, Gordon Ramsay videos, and apparently that's a thing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's that should be a thing that is. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to, how would they, like, do they put the rice as the base, but the rice doesn't, like, hold up to be the base, I, I don't understand. Or maybe, like, the, <laughs> nope, I don't, I don't... <laughs> it's, like, too many questions, and I don't want the answer to the <laughs> Yeah, I did not need to know this information. Right? <laughs> too much, please no. <laughs> yeah, your, your mother yeah. is valid. <laughs> is very you can tell her i will tell hey. her <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um that's pretty much it happy international lolita day <laughs> yeah. i'm mean, so ironically much. enough not in uh, lolita today you you'll have to be <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm being cash today yeah <laughs> yeah hope you have a good day Mm -hmm. I, oh, you have a whole day ahead of you. Uh, oh, yeah. Of the day for me, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go to an Oddities um, kind of market. <gasps> oh, of I'm so jelly. You it's, have these cool I'm, markets there. Yeah, hopefully you'll see some cool art and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this. This was really fun. I had a good time. Thank you for inviting <laughs> me. Yeah. It was quite exciting. A little nerve-wracking, but I think I got through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah and i you know excited to see your stuff um next week thank you yeah and that's it uh thank you everybody we'll be back we'll, we'll be back at some other time <laughs> oh, we were we didn't have any puns here oh my god that's the first pun is the end of the oh i know <laughs> sorry sorry for ruining your expectations no <laughs> No, I should have like included more puns. Oh my god, <laughs> because it's totally into like puns and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I really appreciate that. Yeah, um. <laughs> what a missed opportunity. No, next time, we'll do, right? it. we'll do it next time. Yeah, we'll just gather all the different designers and have them have like a pun off, right? Because oh, I know so like Poofy, Poofy really loves puns. Oh my god. We should oh. totally have like uh <laughs> like in the next online event, we should totally have like a panel of puns. Yeah. With like mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of designers like to have different um like puns with their like dress names and that kind of thing. I love that. Like... Um so yeah, cool. I will 
Oh no, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.